your boy Miley. Last time we was having a conversation about um, the youth, the youth of uh, the inner cities, the urban community, um, mostly the black youth, but uh, you can include the uh, youth of other races because, I mean, <clears throat> When, when they started these urban communities, it was uh, it was predominantly black people. See, that's about all black people that uh, suffer from these oppressed conditions. And uh, it, it spread it out. It, uh, it started with uh, the black youth and the black families and the black men and the black women, but but it done it done escalated to where it's uh it's all over the population now because um, we know that a lot of people uh, acquire certain things from the uh, the black community, you know. People like to uh, emulate our styles and our uh, personalities and um, our culture overall. A lot of other cultures like to emulate our culture, you know. Um, so that's why I say that it's, uh, it's stretching out to uh, all different races, you know. But Initially, it started with the uh, the blacks in the urban community, and uh, the youth is just the youth is they fucked up. Ain't no other way to try to sugarcoat it. Oh, pardon me. Try to sugarcoat it or nothing like that. The youth fucked up. You know, the men want to be women. The women want to be men. A lot of us, a lot of our youth lost in this uh, this drug culture that's going on. Zans, Molly's, Perks, uh, Pills, Loud, uh, Liquor. Um, what, whatever you could name, uh, it's being issued and circulated throughout the black community. And, and man, it's, it's destroying our youths. Minds, it's it's fucking them up mentally. Um, with the, the promethazine, the lean, act, whatever you want to call it, it's fucking you up, making you slow, make you think slow and move slow, talk, act slow. Why would you want to do that? Why? What? What um pleasure are you getting out of you know just? You know, de-escalating the speed of your mind. What what pleasure is you getting out of that? Regardless of the pleasure that you you might receive from it, look at the down points of it. Look at how it make you look, how you act, how you feel around people. Um, we're really putting our uh, our youth is putting putting themselves in positions. To be uh, to be taken advantage of, to be misled, to be dominated. I don't know for what reason. Um, if you take a a, a Zanny or a, or a perk or a sip some lean with your with your uh with your pop. Um, what what you looking for? You know, you smoke some loud, and you uh, you have a little drink. Yeah, if that ain't enough of a of a buzz, of an intoxication, of a of a um, a pleasurable mental state, while you're trying to have a good time, then you're looking for something more than a high. You're looking to be, you're just looking to be fucked up mentally. You just want to be completely 
took out of the mental space that you had and placed in a in a in an imaginary state. Because for the life of me, I just can't understand. But um, you know, it's the new thing. You know, it's been pressed upon us, and it's the new thing: the drugs. Uh, the point I want to get to is the combination of all these things. What what does our youth think? The combination of all these things are due to them mentally. Or physically. Or, you know, it just tear you down in all type of ways. Um, the combination of all these exotic different um, drugs with uh, all these exotic liquors and alcohol beverages, alcoholic beverages, um, combined with the... Uh, with the with the constant with the constant influence of uh, mm, this murderous culture we got this culture where if a person out of compliance to uh to your perception of things you'll lay them down you will you will kill them in an instant and uh we strapped with all these guns, man. With all these different guns, man. I, the guns, our weapons done became so flagrant. I remember, um, what we had? Nine, 10, 11 shot nines. You know, you load your clip up and you got you some shots going. And, you know, if shit escalated to the point of violence, then you let off your shots, you know. Nine. Violence is imminent. It's like ain't no ain't no escalating to the point of violence. It's like as soon as they see you it's cracking, you know? And they got these bangers, man. They got these guns that's that's so deadly and so uh man, the guns just dramatic. That's the best way I could describe it. The guns is just dramatic, man. You gotta you gotta uh you got an F and N, 30 shot F and N, you know, uh, fully automatic rapid fire, uh, spit so fast, so powerful, and you got 30 shots. You got 30 opportunities to lay down your brother, and that's minimal, you know? Combined with uh, you being intoxicated and you being under the influence of uh, certain drugs and uh, certain medicines that that don't have you thinking clearly. You don't think clearly off this shit. There's no way you could say you in the right, logistic, stable, uh, normal, normal mind off these drugs with these guns. The combination is just it's just disastrous, and we actually viewing. The combination of all these horrible things in the city of Chicago, in the urban cities of uh, Atlanta and New York and California and Texas, Houston, wherever you want to see an urban community at and you want to see them fuck each other up at, you want to see the effects of uh, these perks and these mollies and these guns and these uh, this outlook and this, this fucked up mindset of uh, black youth. Uh, black young men and black young women. Um, just go to the urban communities. You can't miss it, man. You fuck around and ride past somebody getting bodied, or if you if you if if that's too graphic for you, then I'm more than positive that you could ride through the urban community at any given time and see uh teddy bears or, or crosses or um, uh, Hennessy bottles and, and uh, liquor bottles with rosaries and candles around them. Um, at any given section, you know, just pick a section and ride around, you'll find it. Um, those are those are urban tombstones. Those are what we uh, th those, those occur 
them type of displays occur when when somebody die um in, in that specific surrounding area or on, on that actual site and uh people gather you know from um all all areas of the community who uh knew the, knew the individual that got killed or that passed um and they had a drinks they smoke they put teddy bears, they put cars, they put bottles, they line it all up and sit it there and in memory of the person that passed. And you could see these uh little murals all over the air, uh, uh urban community. And it don't matter what side you're on, southwest, northeast, you could ride just about anywhere and see these little murals. And it's 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 so common. It's so common in the urban community that you know when a motherfucker die, when a motherfucker get killed, when a motherfucker you knew for for X amount of years or seen in passing or just knew about or heard of, when they get killed, they, this what they get. You know, a lot of us can't afford uh real good funerals, so we 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 make way with what we got. We try to have a funeral. You know, something decent. But these these uh, little murals, these are memories. These uh, display memories of the people that passed. And um, it's so common. The reason for me saying that, or, or even going into detail about that, is that you see these you see these displays, and they so common all throughout the urban community. So that means uh, it's a lot of death. It's a lot of destruction. It's a lot of chaos. You know. And it all started with our youth, man. If we, well, first of all, it started with our family, then it reached out to our youth. And if our youth, uh, if we can't, if we can't get our youth in order, then we destined for, uh, for, for, for destruction, you know, for, for, for death. We just destined for any, anything that you could think of negative. That's what we destined for if we can't. Um, get a hold to our youth and instill certain values and certain core values in our um, in our future, cause the, cause that's what the youth is, man. That's what the children of today are, the future of tomorrow. And if we can't do nothing with them today, then tomorrow is lost. Tomorrow is completely lost. Because just as bad as it is today in Chicago, for example, my city where I'm from, um, it's only gonna get much, much more worse, you know. That's just to say the least. But um I know a lot of people wanna wanna hear solutions or wanna wanna try to learn solutions or what can we do to help or uh, what what can we do as a whole to try to get our get our youth in a better in a better mindset? Um, first of all, it's about communication. That's with anything. That's with any relationship, with any uh, understanding. That's with with anything of a of a of a knowledgeable standpoint, man. It all starts with communication. You know, if if you don't even if you don't want to take the time to stop. And talk to any one of these young brothers or sisters. Even in, even when they in their most ignorant of stages. If you can't find one or two that you could talk to and try to turn around. Or a group and, and just try to get some type of understanding about them or where they're coming from. First of all. And, and this is just factual, man. You can't be from anything other than the urban community. You can't be from these upscale communities. You can't be from white communities. You can't be from um You you got to be from the urban community, man. You got to be able to feel it and, and and be passionate about it and have some 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 complete understanding about so, some overall understanding about what's actually going on in the urban communities. You know? A lot of it take for the brothers that done been through all the bullshit, that done, that done initiated a lot of the bullshit, you know, and done witnessed it 
from a um, from a front row seat. It take brothers like us to uh, to actually come out and, and and get on get in these neighborhoods and these urban neighborhoods and really talk to these brothers, man, and try to get them get them some under. Dude, man, these brothers killing each other. They call it a brother to stay on the very next block of opposition. And they all in the urban community together. And they looking at each other like they ops. They ready to kill each other. They got all these guns. They minds all fucked up on all these drugs. They can't think clear and straight. They, uh, ain't no respect. Ain't no honor there. Um, people don't respect their elders no more. Uh... Young brothers and sisters, 17, 18 years old, man, they think life all about a turn up and kicking it and having a good time and living for the moment. Man, it's, it's so hard to really, you know, if you ain't from the urban community, even if you're from the urban community, and you try to you try to mentally grasp grasp this thing and and wrap your head around it and try to understand it and and, and wonder why we so fucked up. Excuse me, man. I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. You know, I be be thinking about a lot of things mentally. But if you don't try to get an understanding about why things so fucked up, man, then what make you think that you've gonna try to get an understanding about it? We guys in our 30s, 40s, 50s, you know, we know better, we've been through some things. A lot of us woke. A lot of us aren't woke, but we know better. Um, we just don't give a fuck about what's going on in society no more. We don't care about uh, why these why these young boys dressing up like girls and why these young girls dressing up like boys and why these young boys got all these big ass guns, these dangerous rapid fire ass uh, military issued ass guns, uh, AK 47s and F and Ns and all type of shit that's disastrous and a kill up your whole neighborhood. We don't even care about it. Long as it ain't directly affecting us, we don't get no fuck. Let them do what they gonna do. Do you understand, man, what tomorrow gonna look like? A lot of people, man, been so sheltered and so uh wrapped up in they self and they just don't they they just don't understand what's going on in the urban communities. These are the communities that I come from, man, that I lived all my life in. 38 years in these urban communities, man. Ain't, ain't, it ain't too many positive things going on, man, from an uplifting standpoint in these places. You got, um, you got, you got the police. They treat us like we ain't shit. They treat us like garbage. From the, from the blue and whites to the slickums, the detectives, uh, to the precincts, to the, uh, the, the precincts, the holding stations, to, to the, uh, to the Cook County Jail, which is just, man, the Cook County Jail, man, if you go in there and you think you know some shit about the streets or about the gang or about gangs or, uh, anything from that point of view, you go in that Cook County Jail, man, it open your eyes to a whole different aspect of animals, you know, um, they just cage them. They ca they treat them like shit. They dog them out. They railroad them, and they cage us. That's what they do to us. That's in a nutshell. Um, it's just so many specific topics that I could get into, man. From the schooling to the police to uh all all the amenities that's in the black neighborhood, man, in the urban communities. People who actually live in these communities don't benefit nothing from these amenities. All the stores, the grocery stores, the clothing stores, the uh, liquor stores, the uh, beauty supply stores, uh, the laundromats, uh, everything that's considered a necessity in the, in the urban community, uh, black people don't benefit nothing from these places. All we do is give our money 
for for some type of uh momentary or um uh, some type of temporary uh enjoyment and then we back trying to figure out how we get some more money to continue uh continue supporting these establishments that's been placed all throughout the urban community you know and the the sole beneficiaries of these uh of these places uh all throughout the urban community the churches every, everything um we not benefiting from it People of my skin color, my complexion, uh, black Negroes, we not benefiting at all from this stuff, you know. All we doing is staying oppressed by um, continuing to support these things because the people who uh, who we give all our money to, they, they, they don't give a fuck about us. All they want to do is make some money to take care of their families and take care of their people and take care of their races. That's what they and, and their agenda is to uh long as we keep these uh urban communities heavily oppressed and stabilized uh from a negative standpoint, then we can continue eating. We can continue sending our kids to college, we can continue uh funding these huge corporations and uh we can continue to build these prisons and support these prisons so we can keep this recidivism going on and keep locking them up. And, and when they come out, they ain't got no other option but to work at like these fast food restaurants or uh, these little bullshit clothing stores or grocery stores. Or, and, uh, you know, it, it's just, man, it, it's a never ending cycle of negativity inside the urban community. And as fucked up as we've been for all these years, I've only been alive 38 years, 38 some nine years. And, and, and I've witnessed it from the very beginning to when I was able to uh, understand things. 10, 11, 12 years old, I was able to really understand things and see things and just analyze them. And I've witnessed how we've been fucked around all this time. We've been fucked around. We don't even understand it. We think, and these are facts right here. We think, us as black people think, um, we got a nice apartment or, or a house, um, and a, a couple vehicles, a nice, nice vehicle with some, 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 some luxurious or nice. And, uh, you know, we, we, we got a few, uh, we got a few things going on for ourselves. We got a couple dollars in the bank or, you know, we got something going on. Um, we look at our we look at our brothers and our sisters um, from a pitiful standpoint. If you ain't got nothing going on, if you if you fell victim to uh, any of the cocaine that's been put in the neighborhood or any of these drugs or these liquor stores, you be you became a victim of alcoholism or whatever the case may be. Cigarettes done tow you down. You got all type of ailments and illnesses and. Um, you just never knew how to shook it or or you never knew how to sh to to shake it or um escape it or it just took you under at, at one point and you just couldn't you 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 couldn't get past it your same brother or sister will see you going through that struggle going through that mental struggle man that addiction or you know whatever told you down because ain't none of us uh ain't none of us start out fucked up, toe up mentally uh, in these urban communities. And your own brother sister look at you like you ain't shit. Look at this motherfucker. The fuck? You, you out here drinking, you fucked up, you, you embarrassing yourself, you about to ask me for a dollar or two so you can carry on with your addiction. And this is how we look at each other. Note that, that these views, these viewpoints, how we look at each other, um, it's been instilled in us. 
This ain't this ain't something we naturally uh these ain't natural habits of ours. This ain't something that we just uh we we've been growing up in. And uh uh we just we naturally we naturally like this as humans. We aren't. We aren't like this as humans, man. The the traits and the outlooks and even, even most opinions. All this shit been instilled in us, man. And so, so we look at each other like we ain't shit. You know, if a motherfucker ain't getting no money, if a motherfucker ain't doing his thing, his or her thing, or on top, then they ain't on shit, they ain't shit, they ain't got nothing going on, fuck them. And this is facts. This is just how we look at each other, man. You know? And this stems from all sorts throughout the urban community. From the churches. Um, I... The churches, I don't even be. I the the churches is so sensitive of a topic, and in all actuality, it ain't. We all humans, you know. We all humans that believe in something. But once the government get involved with the churches and and how you tax exempt and as long as you uh long as you sign into a certain uh certain chapter of government and you become tax exempt. And um, you gotta push, uh, you gotta push certain um, political views, and uh, you can't talk about uh, certain things in the church. Um, it's a lot of stuff going on with the church now, you know. And a lot of these pastors and reverends and preachers, y'all know it. Y'all know y'all dirty, man. Y'all know y'all done led us down the bad road, man. Y'all know Jesus Christ wasn't never. Jesus Christ wasn't never something that uh that black people uh was supposed to praise. Jesus Christ was never a man. White, blue-eyed, blonde hair, Jesus Christ was not uh the idol for black people. It just and that's in a nutshell. And if you and, and if and if you uh if you black and you actually believe that um, Jesus Christ is the way out for us, then um, then I mean you just you just fail into their plan. That's what they want, you know. That's why that's why the church is tax exempt. That's why they they why they push this so heavily. It's it's just about the same amount of churches as liquor stores throughout the urban community. It's all it's all about uh. Uh, uh, about uh, brainwashing you and blindsiding you and uh, mentally manipulating you. That's what it's all about. You know? Um, and I ain't by no means knocking nobody's uh, religion or nobody's belief, you know, or nobody's faith or anything like that. Um, at one point, I was. Uh, yeah, I was heavy into the Christianity thing. I was um I was a devout Christian. You know, I ain't go to church every time church came around, but uh, you couldn't tell me nothing about Jesus. Uh, uh I, I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross uh for my sins and the only way to heaven is through him. I I believe that. At one point I believed that heavily. You know? But after so many years, man, you just got to understand things. Once you clear your mind and open your eyes and do some research and do some analyzation and think about things, man, it just becomes so clear to you. And a lot of people who do understand what I'm talking about and, and the truth is, is, is of utmost clarity to them and they understand things, uh, a lot of people just want to keep going with the story, man. A lot of people just want to stay with it. Oh man, I done, I, I done fucked up. You know, I done, I done led my people astray, um, because I was mentally brainwashed and thought some, thought some things to be true that weren't actually true. You know, it just was fed to me that way, and I, and I ate it all up. Um, those people right now, they in such denial. They don't even want you to talk about it around. 
They don't want you to talk about no Jesus. If you ain't, if you ain't on the same page they on, if you ain't a firm believer that Jesus died on the cross and he our savior, and one day he gonna come from the sky and save us all from this hell we living in on earth in the urban communities. You know what? Religion is a sensitive topic. Because if a if a person been believing in something for so many years, wholeheartedly, you know, unwavering belief in something for so many years, and when you actually find out that you've been um uh, that that the that, that, that you've been deceived, then um you don't, you don't want to come to that realization, you know, especially if this would everybody know you for, you know. Mm. You just want to keep you just want to keep the hoax going, you know. Let's let's just keep it going, man. Fuck it, you know. Let's just keep it going. Yeah. And, and a lot of us believe that. A lot of us believe that um, getting our youth. From this negative state, mm. they have to be included in the churches. You know, they need they need Jesus in their life. Uh, you get them away from this negative state if you put Jesus in their life. Um, make them look at things from um, uh, from from Jesus' standpoint. You know, from a Christianity standpoint, or from a Lutheran Baptist. Uh, whatever type of stand. Uh, it's a, and it ain't just Christianity. It ain't just Jesus believers. It's a lot of uh it's a lot of religions out there, man, that preach division. It's a lot of religions out there that that believe that their religion is what's happening. Their religion is uh your religion ain't shit. My religion is what's happening. And they preach this heavily. So they might not they might not verbally say um you might not verbally be a christian to be like uh, islam ain't shit or you might not you you might be a a a, a more sign a, a a person of the more science temple and be like a uh, uh mm, hebrew israelites they ain't shit or or you know uh, if you ain't looking at it from um from dr uh, Nova Ali, then <clears throat> If you ain't looking at life from his standpoint, then uh, no, you're not right. You, you're not doing right. See, religion, religion is just a big of, of economy that they check a bag off of, um, just like uh, health care, just like uh, the food industry, um, just like the educational services, uh what else? It's so many. It's so many ways they work us, you know. They and they work these things in the urban community so so vigorously and uh, so excessively. They work these uh. They work these angles in on us and slide them in on us and has fuck has fucked up even even when we think we ain't fucked up. They fucking us up. There's so many brothers and sisters with a lot of knowledge that know better, that know so much better, and they they know how they they know how they doing us wrong and fucked up. They don't even care, long as they can make some money. Um, and this pertaining to a lot of people. This is pertaining to so many people. This pertaining to the churches, the preachers, the pastors. Y'all sway us, y'all work us, so y'all can make y'all bag. You know. Even though y'all know y'all leading y'all people down a straight down down a a, a, a bogus ass road, um, it's people in the healthcare, uh, in the health that who healthcare so dirty. First of all, these restaurants, all these restaurants they put in the urban communities, fast food joints. What these Arabs selling us these this garbage ass grease food, fucking us up. These Arabs and these motherfucking Jews are uh, selling us all this liquor and cigarettes and all this bogus ass shit, fucking us up. Then they sent us to these motherfucking healthcare, uh, these hospitals. 
that fuck us up even more. Man, this they destroying us. They are literally destroying us. A lot of us don't even give a fuck. Long as we can make it from day to day, keep a couple dollars in our pocket, uh, provide for our kids, and um, you know, keep a roof over the head, we alright. We alright. We don't get no fuck about uh, issues that 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 ain't personally or directly pertaining to us. When all actuality, every issue in the urban community is directly and pertaining the directly pertaining to uh black people. Black people, Latino people, uh, poor white people, they call y'all white trash, you know. They throw y'all in trailer parks and, and um, you know, they manipulate y'all and how y'all thinking the president for y'all and he gonna help y'all with jobs and all. Man, look. And, and this one way, this one serious way that they manipulate us through the education system. They teach us all how to, how to, how to get our ass up and go to work. Go work. Keep this motherfucking corporation called America going. Get your ass up. Go to work. They teach us how to they teach us how to work, don't they? They don't teach us how to uh be independent, be self-driven, uh be goal orientated, uh the uh, now, fuck a job, get your business, uh, become an entrepreneur, develop something for yourself, for your kids, for your kids' kids. Develop a legacy, you know? Develop a corporation for yourself, you know? Develop something that's going to that's gonna keep your family growing and eating for generations at a time. They don't tell us nothing about that. You got to learn that through uh, advanced methods of research and, and all type of shit. And go to school. Get your ass up and go to school for uh five, six years, uh, elementary and all that shit. Then high school for another couple years. Then college for another four, five years. And all you're going to learn is how to, how to work. If you develop a trait, um, it's because you, you branched off from the bullshit and made yourself great. This is all factual shit, man. You know, um. I'm speaking the unspoken truth. This what's going on. This our everyday living. This our ev these are everyday environments in the urban community. I done lived it. So I I talk about the shit I done lived. I ain't I ain't sitting here talking about all shit I done researched and um shit I done read in books or no, I'm talking about shit I actually lived, man. This is what I lived my whole 38 years of life in the urban community. I watched the struggle. I, I done been through recidivism. I done um I've been a victim of the court system. I done I done I done sold drugs to my people, you know, I done smoked weed, I done I done drunk that I done I was I was a, a heavy drinker, you know. Um I, I was game banker, I done had my negative points in my life. But all them negative points was all attained mentally. And now, I can speak on any one of them situations uh, fluidly, uh, descriptively, and uh, with precision. Because this shit I've been through, you know? And um, it's just sad what happened. It's just sad because I witnessed it happen from, from when crack hit the community, tore up our families. Um, put our men in jail and, and, and caused this division and separated us and, and caused all this jealousy and envy because a few guys was getting some money and some wasn't. And um, then the guns came about and we started killing each other over this shit, you know. Uh, the the, the hip-hop community, they fucked us up too because uh, initially hip-hop was a beautiful thing for the black community, black and urban community, because it taught structure, it taught uh, self-awareness, self-value, it taught us how to respect our sisters, how men were strong, black men and kings. Uh, then the Jews got a hold of hip-hop. They say we could create some a massive amounts of revenue from hip-hop. And we could give the niggas a couple, some millions, some hundreds of thousands and some millions, but we're going to make a lot more money than that. But first, we got to corrupt them. We got to put a message out. And the, the message in hip-hop is so, so, uh, so flagrant. 
Ooh, the message in hip hop is so utterly flagrant. Mm. You got to live a certain way. You got to do a certain thing. You got to drive a certain thing. Um, you got to look a certain way. You got to talk that shit. You got to talk a certain way. If you ain't doing none of the above or all of the above from a negative aspect, then they're going to blackball you in hip hop. Don't talk that positive shit in hip hop. If you want to be a heavy, you got to push that bullshit, you know? And um, a lot of our brothers, man, we've we been fucked up. We, we done came from the bottom, ain't never really had shit. When a motherfucker, when a white man offer you, you know, a couple hundred thousand, million, a couple million dollars to, uh, to verbally decimate and destroy your brother? We look at it, oh, we just talking that shit. This will be good at we rappers. You know, we poets. We could talk that shit, get us some money. I'm going to get me some money to just talking that shit. And we love them. I, myself included. I love the rappers. I love, I love the niggas to talk that shit. You know, niggas like Meek and, and, and Yo Gotti. And I, I love niggas to talk that shit, T.I. But in all actuality, um... Then people dangle the bag over our face to, uh, to to help continue to destroy our communities. And, um, nine times out of ten, we we running with it because we ain't never had shit. You know, we we don't consider ourselves uh, valuable without money, without finances. You know, if we ain't got no money, if we ain't got no couple dollars, if we if we can't pull up and provide and do what we want to do and if we can't do that shit we feel like we worthless you know and um and, and that was instilled in us too the uh, uh just a way to take our self value away from us you know but um anyway it's just so many um so many and and this what this what this what baffled me about rappers right about the hip hop community it's so much revenue in the hip hop community, you know, and um, it's a lot of woke people in the hip hop community too. Now, don't get me wrong; it's a lot of a lot of people that aren't, a lot of people that self absorbed and, and caught up in the um, caught up in the bullshit, you know. But uh, with all these massive amounts of revenue within the hip hop community, why why is all the urban community still so fucked up? Because all the hip hop, all the people, the the real hip hop people, the real hip hop heads, the real hip hop pioneers, all them niggas came from the urban community. Why we get a bag and just turn our back on our community? Why we do that? You know, all the um man, there's just so many people. I don't want to. I don't want to go into detail about that because I. This would be a much longer video than it already is. My whole point is um. Why are we letting our youth go astray like this? Why are we letting our youth just go astray? They just they fucked up and we don't care. A lot of us scared of them. A lot of us are. Completely scared of these young boys with these guns, these dreads, these shirtless, wild ass, little skinny boys with their pants hanging all off the back of their ass, with their drawers up, their pants down, with these uh, with these belts on, and 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 a lot of us scared of them. Shit, motherfucker don't want that type of problem. You know, motherfucker don't want to go try to talk to these boys and they turn up and and and, and act a fool on you. You know, you know. Um, but, but, but fear ain't the trait of a real man. Everybody should know that. Fear to be scared of trying to push a, um, a positive solution on your people or, you know, try to conduct yourself in a positive manner, uh, uh, in the face of adversity and, and, and aggressiveness and uh, that, uh, just being fearful ain't a, ain't a man trait. Ain't a grown ass. It's not a trait of a grown ass man, you know. But uh, that was instilled in us too, you know. We got beaten, and, and it's just that's a whole different story. But um, man, I just I I I I I wish I had money. 
I just wish I had some money. I let me be one of these fuck multi-millionaires that because when you actually think about it, man, and this just this just uh a, a, a man talking to talking to his fellow humans. When you actually think about things, man, what, if if you could provide for your family, I mean, just keep everybody stable, you know, everybody comfortable, you know. You got a got a nice home, got a couple vehicles. Everybody could get, you know, everybody got transportation. Ain't nobody hungry or cold or, you know, suffering in any type of way. Once you once you establish that. Because it, it don't take a whole lot to establish that. Because we all came from nothing and we know that uh we know we make nothing out of something. I mean, we make uh something out of nothing, excuse me. We make uh we make a beautiful warm home um out of out of out of the projects. I'm just gonna say out of nothing, out of the projects. You know. It's been plenty of uh, uh beautiful human beings and, and, and um successful people that came from nothing, you know? And, and and um black people throughout society is just a living example of that. <clears throat> so with that being said, uh, we know it don't take much to be comfortable and, and how, how that love and um everybody be uh everybody be inspired to do something better or or you know just have a positive uh positive outlook about shit it don't take a lot so when you become a millionaire or a multi-millionaire and, and you could afford 13 14 million dollar mansions and shit like that uh i just don't understand when it's a whole when it's a when it's a uh a, a community of 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 uh black people that is that's in these positions um I know you work hard for everything you got and it's yours and you and you earned it, but what 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 happened to each one teach one? What happened to giving back to your brothers and your sisters? What happened to try, trying to help people get in a better situation? Do you know um all it takes is a seed for a tree to grow? A big ass humongous tree to grow, it started with a seed. I just don't understand why we don't care about each other no more. And everybody done been through some shit. I know people done had their hardships to where they 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 don't want to fuck with your with your own with your black people and, uh, and the niggas dirty and grimy and to do you wrong and breaking your crib and rob you and all, all this shit been instilled in us though. Before before uh crack cocaine hit the community and and motherfuckers start suffering drastically from all this type of shit. Uh, we was brothers and sisters, man. We had love and unity, and, and we had the elders watched over the youth, and and anybody that was older than you, uh, always tried to preach some positive to you, give you some upright conversation, give you some, give you some good outlooks about shit. Man, we was brothers and sisters, man. We held each other high through poverty, through uh segregation. Through racism, we still held each other high. We was brothers and sisters. Now motherfuckers got a bag. See, this the division. This where they uh this where you become compromised. This where you uh where you get to questioning certain things because you got money now. Now that you got a couple dollars and you ain't suffering and fucked up and going through the bullshit no more, uh, now you're up there and you're looking at your brother like, man, what the fuck you want? And, I, you know, I ain't mad at nobody for uh, having their own viewpoints or opinions or or outlooks or how they judge people or, you know, how they, how they, how they feel they should hold themselves to, uh, to certain standards. I ain't mad at nobody for that. Um, I just I just don't understand why we as grown ass men and women just lost our way. Why we think uh as long as we straight, as long as our kids are straight, a lot of us don't even give a fuck about our kids or none of no family type shit, none of that shit. As long as we, well, a lot of selfish as shit, you know. But 
it's allowed us to still, you know, hold family tight and be like, long as I'm straight, my kids straight, you know, whoever I'm with, my loved ones, they straight. I don't get no fuck about nobody else. Yeah, yeah. That's the mindset a lot of us got, you know. But uh, long as they instill this mindset, this separation mindset, and this uh, this selfish ass outlook we got about shit. Long as that shit stay strong and stay relevant and, and stay prominent within the urban community, they got us. They got us exactly how they want us. And you could think, you as a man or you as a woman, could think that you straight and don't nobody got you and you got your shit in order, man. They fucking us up and we don't even know it. We don't even understand it. All we know is that... uh. We could go out to eat when we want to. We could get in our car, ride around, you know, play our music and shit, you know. Um, we go to stores, get our hair done and get our hair cuts and shit, you know, buy our mics and, you know, you know. We got our loud and, you know, motherfuckers got their big fifth, so they leaders of the Remy or the whatever you drink and, you know, uh, we could turn up in the clubs and we, you know, we could do our thing. And if a motherfucker play, we got bangers and, you know, we got niggas that's going to ride with us. And uh, These are our mindsets. That's the way we look at life in the urban community. I want a lot of y'all to just check out urbanism. The way we, uh, the way our community's been structured. It's, it, it wasn't by accident, you know. The way um, you could you could you could be in the urban community, where uh, you know it's some nice houses and shit. There's a few nice houses here, here and there, you know, some a few nice places. They got parks and shit, you know, rebuilt parks and you know they got some nice little areas and shit like that. But overall, it's fucked up. Overall. It's, it's all bad. People struggling. Ain't really no money. Uh, if you're getting money, you're selling drugs or you're selling pussy or you're hustling some type of way. Or it, it's really fucked up. Overall, it's fucked up. Then you go cross town. You go cross town to the suburban areas. Houses nice as shit. They got the big malls. They got all the nice stores. They got the uh, the, the, the nice ass cars and shit. You know, everybody, majority of people credit good and you know shit like that. Uh, but you don't see too many blacks. You don't see too many uh, blacks, African Americans. You don't see too many uh, uh, Africans, uh, uh, indigenous people, uh, uh, Indians, or uh, uh, whatever you want to call yourself, Pan American, uh, pro black, Hebrew, uh, Morrison, whatever you want to call yourself, you don't see too many of yourself. You don't see too many of your skin colors uh, throughout these uh, suburban areas. Well, now they got some suburban areas where they, uh, when they, when the whole uh, regentrification thing uh, came into play, you know, they kind of mixed the communities up or something. But uh, still, in the upper echelon white areas, uh, your nigga ass can't come in there. You can't come in there, and make no money, do nothing good. You can't be righteous. You can't that high smile on your face. You can't do none of that shit there, you know, because uh, they got sections for us. It's called the urban community. You know, and if you are the urban community, that's where they want your ass to stay at, oppressed and fucked up, and and they make sure of it. They make fucking sure of it. You know, go in the um, and it's just this just factual shit. Go in a uh, predominantly white, Jewish, uh, Asian, Korean, uh, Arabian, German, any of one of them neighborhoods, man. How many police stations you see? How many times you even see a police car patrolling? How many patrol cars do they got? Do you see any detectives at all? Um, you just see luxuries and a lot of amenities going on, and a lot of freedom and a lot of, a lot of, you know, just a lot of friendliness amongst themselves. Now, now, in that same note, go to the urban community, boy. 
You see so many police cars everywhere. They pulling you over. They jacking you everywhere you turn. And you see so much poverty. You see so many homeless people. So many people fucked up and struggling and dirty. You see so many people. You see so much ignorance. You see police stations, precincts. You see police stations everywhere. You see tons of churches. You see tons of liquor stores. You see tons of greasy ass fast food, fast food garro spots. Uh, you see uh these clothing stores. Man, clothing store, pair of pants cost eight, nine hundred dollars, t-shirts five hundred dollars, and man, they fucking us up. Yeah, most of the time you don't see no trauma units, but it's so much trauma going on, so much death and mayhem and violence, so many guns. Motherfuckers getting killed left and right, but you barely got trauma units in the urban community. Why can't nobody understand this shit? Why ain't no why why the people who do understand and recognize and aware of all this shit, why they not spreading the word about this shit? Why they not um offering awareness to their other brothers and sisters that aren't aware? So we can all be aware of this shit and change our mindset about this shit and steal some different things in our children. Why are we not doing that? I got a channel right now. It's called uh, Blackout because I had to take it down for uh, for certain reasons, you know. But um, it's coming back up, and when it come back up, it's gonna be the unspoken truth by Marlon. And um, these are the type of topics and things that I'm gonna be discussing on the regular. Um, a, a lot of people could join in on the comments and discuss it with me. A lot of people could just sit back and observe and, and, and try to get some insight about themselves or some knowledge about what's going on with us and why, why uh, urbanized communities so crazy and fucked up. Um, and a lot of people could really uh, give me some more understanding about shit because I'm not a nigga that, that think he know it all. I'm, I'm just as in the dark as a lot of y'all is. I'm just... Uh, with the with the little with the little profound knowledge and insight that I do got, I just try to express it and spread it. I and and the stuff I'm talking about is factual because I actually lived and have been through this stuff. You know, I just want us all to do better as a whole because until we do better as a whole, it could be ninety percent of us that's doing great, but that ten percent that ain't. As long as they got a percentage that they could corrupt and fuck up and oppress and do wrong, and it's going to continue to spew over to our children and our children's children. And, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to continue to be a, 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 a fucked up thing in our communities. It's going to be, a, it's just going to continue to be all bad in our communities, man. And at some point, we're going to have to take responsibility for this shit. Because we can't just keep blaming it on what people done did to us and instilled in us and stuff like that, man. At some point, we just got to take responsibility and say, no more. We ain't going to go no more. We ain't going. We, we quit to say that to one of our brothers or sisters. When they do something wrong to us or when we're ready to blow their ass down, we, we ain't going. Ain't nobody going for that. You know? So why we go far from them? Why we go far from the powers that be? I'm just saying, it don't have to be like this. It don't have to, you know. It's so many different. Um, it's so many different ways that we could uh, we could just try to we could just try to change it. It'd be a slow process. It'd be a tedious process, but it it could be a process if we uh if we pursue it. And um. I know I've been speaking about multiple topics, and this this is a pretty long video, hour long video, but uh, it, it's worth the watch. If you watched it all the way through, I appreciate it. I really do, and um, I just hope you get some type of insight, or understanding about yourself, about about our neighborhoods, about our urban communities, about why our children and why why we as humans, why we as adults, are, uh, you know, got these fucked up ways about ourselves. But um. I just want to share that information, man, and, and, and I just want y'all to continue viewing, 
because uh, every time I talk, man, I'm going to try to give y'all something insightful. Yeah. I, I, I'm just Marley, man. That's all I am. I ain't no no prophet, nobody special or nothing, man. I'm just a black dude from the east side of Chicago, man. And I'm just sharing my experiences with y'all. And on that note, man, y'all have a blessed day, man.